So I gave you. Now I, I I'm done with general characteristics of sponges. Let's go to each class. So the specimens we have in the lab. Ask me, I mean, what class this belongs to. All of your lecture notes should help you. But if you don't know in the lab what class, you remember phylum porifera, of course you should know that, and then what class they belong to. The specimens we have in the lab. Okay, but uh, play with them, study them. Um, spicules are, and then, uh, sorry about that, on, um, right, on Tuesday, sorry, on Tuesday you're going to get your planaria, the worm. I said it in my email. Please open up your Delft College, Maria. Open up your Delft College email and read them. I mean, how come you pick up on Maria? Angela, uh, Angela says, I'm sitting here too, you know, I'm paying attention. Well, Maria has her head laying on the wall and taking his nose at the same time, waking up, but you're sitting up, right? Taking notes, so I don't have to call you. But Maria. Okay, so what happens if you're going to get your worms on Tuesday? They're gonna be there. And if somebody wants to volunteer, bring some liver, they love liver, I'll bring some fish from home, raw. Nothing cooked. They do not uh, cook food. That's what they eat, they're carnivore animals. Okay, so anyhow, uh, we have to decide what you wanna do with your, uh, each group get five, six, primary. Okay, so I ordered about 40 primary. So each one of you should get one. But your group get five or six. So think about something which you want to do. Research it this weekend. You don't see me for how many days? Five days. Ruben, you don't see me for five days. Can you live with that? Yeah. You seem to be doing that. That's good. Yeah. Okay, spicules. Uh, uh, spicules are made up of calcium carbonate. Um, and spicules have three to four rays, usually tubular or base shape, and ascanoid, cyclonoid, glucanoid canal, uh, canal. So sponges are not classified based on their canal system. Sponges are not classified based on their canal system. They're classified based on spicules, DNA, and the shape, okay? So they are tubular or base shape. Uh, a few species we have in the lab. We have Leucosolinia in the lab. We have Sycon in the lab, and they both belong to class Calicaria. Okay, so they are they are found in marine and shallow water area, uh, and uh, bright yellow, green, red, uh, lavender. They can be very colorful. Not the ones we have in the lab. Uh, but you know they can be uh, very nice um, type of um, color, right here. Okay, the next class is he a class hexapenalidum, which was in the video. You guys asked me what class. This is the class hexa. It means what? Six. 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 Very good. Penta it means five. Hexa it means six. You guys know this from your past life. They're glass sponges, uh, skeletons of six rays. Okay, uh, siliceous spicules made up of silicon. Siliceous, it means silicon. Okay, and then um, they have sensational uh, cell structure. Remember that, I said that today. Sensational, it means one cell with multi nuclei in there. So it is possible for them, and most are really uh, symmetrical. Uh, you all know what symmetrical means. You know, they're symmetry type animals. Uh, they are not really symmetry, but I will talk about symmetry and uh, radial symmetry before. Nearly all are deep sea forms, and what else? Uh, Venus flower basket is the one that we have in the lab. Venus flower basket is the name of the com the common name of the sponge we have in the lab. That's a common name. I do not have the scientific name for you. And the name of the class, the common name for cl a class is called, the non-common name for class is called glass sponge. Okay, Venus flower basket is morning lab, so the one that I hold up, it was in an orange container. Okay, that is the name of the organism, a uh, common name of the organism. Okay, class demo spongy, bath sponges, horny sponges, they call them common name. 
Uh, they are large sponges. Uh, they are made up of silicon. Some of them are made up of silicon. Uh, some of them are made up of spongin. You remember that? I talked about spongin. They're all liquinoid. Uh, all of the members of this class, they, uh, they change the, uh, uh, the canal system. You remember the canal system? I talked about it. All of them are the canal system is a liquinoid type canal system. Okay, so that's uh, something. Um, they leave gemmules behind, of course, and I uh, talked about gemmules. Uh, bath sponges lack, lack silicon. If they had silicon, you would not take them to the bathtub and clean yourself. You remember the silicons are sharp, pointy. That's pretty much what the spicules, you saw the spicules of the silicon and calcium carbonate are sharp and pointy. And that's why uh, you would not. They have uh, sponges instead. And that's one of the questions I asked at the beginning. I said, why sponges are not a good meal for other for fishes, for other animals? How come they don't eat sponges? Anybody wants to elaborate? Like silicon. Yeah, because they have sharp, pointy silicon or calcium carbonate. So it goes into the mouth of the animal, and it's just like it's just like you start eating nails, right? It would be the same as that. You don't want to eat nails. Animals, they you know, sniffle the sponges, they feel some of the spicules. They do not go there and eat them. Okay, that's why. Uh, and of course, they have a bad odor too sometimes. Uh, so that's why they are not a good meal for other animals because of the spicules. Spicules, of course, the bath sponges do not have spicules. They have spongin instead. What else? 95% of living sponges uh, include most are, okay, most of the sponges, what am I saying in here, uh, include most large sponges are in this class, in the class Demospongia. About 95% of the sponges that have been discovered so far. That's what you're talking about, I'm talking about. Um, the last class, you guys, I thought I'd put it up there. We do not have homoscleromorpha. We do not have any specimen of it in the lab, um, but uh, I said mostly marine with a variety of colors, but live in obscure habitat, generally found near shore uh, and deep water, separates from demospongy due to presence of a true basement membrane. I never talked about true basement membrane. It's what it is, it's a connective tissue that connects all of the cells together, like your uh, like your um, epithelial tissue, you remember that? They are connected to a basement membrane before they are connected to the smooth muscle or other structures. So uh, that's what pretty much basement membrane means. Under uh, uh, pinacoderm or extracellular matrix also have adheres to cell junctions that form tissues unlike other sponges. Dividing two uh, clades, again, your textbook and I do not agree on, well, he, he uses the clay in different places, different ways, but uh, do not, again, do not worry about that slide. I just put it out there if you, there is a fourth class, but I'm not gonna ask any question about it, okay? Uh, both lecture and lab questions. Oh, radiate animals, I brought this model, so I might as well, before I go to radiate animals, I'm done with sponges. So this is a sponge, as you can see, uh, uh, another sponge is growing on the bottom by budding, okay? And the structure on top is osculum, right? So you do not have osculum anywhere else. What do you have on the surface of the animals? Those openings are called osteum, singular osteo, plural, okay? So based on this model, if I, uh, the blue, the, I don't know, you can see it or not, the, the water goes from osteum to the blue structure right here. The blue structure would be your uh, incurrent canal, and the yellow one would be your radial canal. And then there are openings in here, which is called prosopia. And all of these black dots, you guys see that? Those black dots are your apopia. And then the pink, right in the middle, what would that be? The spongocele, right? The pink, the pink is spongocele, the black dots are apple pie. Okay, and that's how sponges are, this is a base type. So what type of canal system is this? Which of the three canal systems you study? Which one would that be? It has a radial canal, it's a side 
side canal, side canal, canal. Okay. So I'll go at this uh, before before I leave uh, sponges. I'm done with sponges. There is not much to be said about sponges. Okay. Short chapter. Uh, radiate animals. The next group of animals you saw the video this morning on uh, radiate animals. Radiate animals. I didn't bring any here, but uh, I will bring them on uh, Tuesday and go over it. Uh, what happens with radiate animals? Most are sessile and easy meals for other animals. Unlike sponges, sponges are not easy meal for other animals because of the spicules we talked about. It. But these guys are easy meals for other animals. They have a weapon. It's called nematocyst, and I will go over that. And uh, we do have slide of nematocyst in the lab. They look like sperm. Okay, but that's nematocyst. And in J, human even cause death. They can kill human. The most dangerous ones can cause a human. Uh, two well-defined germ layers: ectoderm and endoderm. Do sponges have germ layers? No. no. Protista have germ layers? No. Right? You remember that? So protista do not have germ layers, sponges do not have germ layers, and, but these guys have germ layers, ectoderm and endoderm. So they are what? Diploblastic type of animals. Thank you. They're diploblastic animals. And then if they have mesoderm, it's really pretty much came from ectoderm. Okay? If you will see in the sea anemones, uh, some books, some places they say. Uh, epidermis is uh, ga and gastrodermis. Epidermis comes from ectoderm. You already know that. And then gastrodermis, which is the digestive tract, you will see it in a minute. It came from endoderm. Do I make sense? So far, everybody. So you know, we talked about it that we have three. We have the chick had three germ layers: ectoderm, endoderm, mesoderm, and we had in lab practical exam the notochord came from mesoderm, right? The nervous system, your brain, and the spinal column, it came from uh, this, the spinal cord, it came from ectoderm. You remember that? Okay, your endoderm is your gut. Okay, liver. It was, those were the questions that we discussed. <coughs> Gastrodermis cells in gastrovascular cavity. You don't know what gastrovascular cavity is. I'll show you, we'll talk about it. Simplest animals with nerve cells. Did sponges have nerve? No. No. Sponges did not have nerve, but they had receptors, and they could close their pinacocytes, right? That's another function of pinacocytes. You had, um, uh, they were there. They can give shape to the animal, and also, if they could sense poison, they close the, uh, they call them, I didn't mention it, uh, on the poro, Sites, porocytes on the sponges. I'm going back and forth between sponges and these guys. Sorry about that. So the porocytes were around the ostium. You remember that? So these are porocytes around the ostium. Remember that? Okay. So they could, they can close. And those porocytes have receptors. Bio one. You studied. You know what cell receptors are. So they could sense poison or something that is not agreeable to the animal. They do not have nervous system. They close. So they do not allow the poison go into the animal. Am I making some sense? So sponges do not have nervous system. But they have, the cells have receptors to sense the poison from an environment. And the cells that have the receptors there are your porocytes. Porocytes. Pores, opening, peripheral. Why do they call them peripheral? Pores. They have so many pores. Opening, right? Holes. Right? Are we making some sense? Porocytes. So does it close like the whole spot? Like, right, it, it closes. It stops until the poison goes away. Okay. And then they open up and then. If they, that poison is there all the time, of course, the animal die. Yeah. OK, but uh, these guys have the first group of animals, the simplest animals in nerve cells. These are final, the questions that I will ask during the final are these. 
that piece. Just you won't talk, don't worry about finding. But make sure you know this. Okay, uh, radiated animals, they are animals that I didn't bring any today. I thought we'll just we'll talk about sponges. But they're like jellyfish, you all know jellyfish. This look like do you agree jellyfish look like my hand or not? Except this part, just imagine this part right there. But if I cut jellyfish any direction, any way I cut jellyfish, both halves are alike. Listen, if I cut this animal from top from top, not like this. If I cut the animal from top to the bottom, right? This half and that half, exactly alike. Not internally, I'm talking about externally, okay? Then if I cut it this way, that half and that half look alike. If I cut it this way, any way I cut it, the animal, both halves, externally look alike. Those type of animals are referred to as just like jellyfish, most of you know jellyfish. I had a student many, 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 many years ago. She was sitting up front. I said, do you know what jellyfish is? She said, no, I don't know. So I whispered it in another language. So we said, oh, yeah. So anyhow, you guys know what jellyfish is. OK, so right. Uh, sea anemones, if you guys don't know, same thing. Same hydra, if you have looked at it in biology, one or not. So any of these. But we have radiated animals, the uh, bilateral, th these are radiated animals. The bilateral symmetry animals, bilateral symmetry animals, you only can cut the animal one way. Only one way that both halves are alike. You only can cut me right in the middle, right here, that this half and that half externally alike. You cannot cut me this way. If you cut me this way, longitudinally, right? Get a big, huge knife or saw and cut me right here this way. Is this half and that half alike? No. no. So I am a bilateral symmetry animal. Is that what radiated animals are? Bilateral? No, radiated animals are radiant. Okay. You cut them any direction longitudinally, like jellyfish. Yeah. You cut them any way, and both halves are alike. Okay. Longitudinally. Bilateral symmetry animals, you cut them only one way. An example, a crayfish. Huh? Yeah. Crayfish, you only can, if it is a crayfish, you only can cut it this way, longitudinally, and this half and that half look alike. Okay. There's no other way you can call, cut you know, a crayfish. Okay, so crayfish is a bilateral symmetry animal. Jellyfish is a radial symmetry animal. Comb jelly, some of you have been. Those are radial symmetry. Main characteristics of uh, radial symmetry animal, uh, they are aquatic, two forms of life, polyp and medusa. You probably don't know what it is. I will talk about it, but quickly, a polyp stage is the stage that is stationary. It sits on the bottom of the ocean. Just like you guys are not old enough, but you go to a doctor and the doctor says in your colon, when you get old enough, everybody gets them. And you go to your colon and say, ah, oh, then look at camera through your um, cold, cold, not cold, and through your uh, rectum. Thank you. I, those words, nasty words come right away. But the scientific words do not come <laughs> right away. I don't know. So they put a, and then they see a little polyp in your uh, colon, and they, or they cut it off. It's no big deal. So, but anyhow. So that's polyp, it means station. Med, uh, Medusa stage, it means the stages of the life cycle that they do move around, just like jellyfish. Jellyfish is the Medusa stage, and you will see jellyfish has a polyp stage too. Okay, so uh, exoskeleton or endoskeleton uh, of chitinous, uh, calcareous or protein, if they have exoskeleton, you will see that, or endoskeleton, <coughs> they are made up of chitin. Chitin in bio one, and you guys studied that, right? It's a sugar molecule, right? Which has a nitrogen attached to it, right here. That would be a chitin. So, a chitin is a sugar molecule with, uh, you know, it's not a protein, it's not a carbohydrate, it's just something in between, okay? Uh, amino acid, it's just, they call it chitin. Okay, so that's what I mean by chitinous. And calcareous, of course, made of calcium, 
carbonate or protein molecule. Uh, gastrovascular cavity, of course, they have that. And then mouth and anus is in the same place. That's gross. That's nasty. Whoever created that, we should go ask me a question. Why mouth and anus is in the same place? For example, imagine this is a radio symmetry animal. This is a sponge. But I wish I had him here. Um, is that right? A Marco. Imagine mouth is here and anus is right here. On these animals, so they have, they have, they have mouth and anus in the same place. Uh, they have tentacles, of course. I'll show you some pictures. They have cnidocytes. The name of the cell is cnidocytes, which contain nematocyst. So nematocyst is a structure within the cnidocytes, and you do have slide of nematocyst in the lab, and we have model of the cnidocytes in the lab. Okay. And they have epithelial muscular cells, the cells that are like epithelial cells, but they have muscle fibers on the bottom. And you will see pictures of it here in a minute. That's what epithelial muscular means. Asexual and sexual reproduction, of course, uh, planula larva. The larva of these animals, uh, they have it, they call it planula. And then no respiratory or silomic cavity, right? Uh, sponges didn't have silomic cavity either. You will see See that later. Uh, this is not clear for you guys, I hope. Uh, but sponges do not have coelom either. Um, we call it sponge seal, but it's not a true coelom that you will learn later on. Do not worry about it. But do not have coelom. These guys do not have coelom cavity. Either. Okay, phylum Cnidarian, or the old name was for the for Solenterata. You remember, I mean, in here somewhere along the line, I said uh, Aisha. Is that right? I said, whatever it is, let it go. Uh, I said solenterata, it means uh, C-O-E, it's coelom. Okay, so it's always, for the rest of the semester, anytime you see C-O-E as uh, solenterata, and then it says seal. Nidocytes, of course, they have to have nidocytes. If, if they discover a jellyfish today, or radiate animal, any kind of animal, they discovered today that does not have cnidocytes, they do not put it in this pile. Does not go in this pile. It goes to a different pile. Okay? So all of the members of this phylum must have the cnidocyte. C silent. C silent. Cnidocyte. And then mostly marine and a few are freshwater. We have a few freshwater. Hydroid, sea anemones, jellyfishes, and horny corals. And uh, four classes, uh, so they are hydrozoa, uh, scyphozoa, uh, cubozoa, and anthozoa. There are four classes which we do have, um, uh, except this one. Cubozoa, we do not have it in the lab. It does not mean that I'm not going to ask you any question from cubozoa. I will because some of them are the most dangerous, most poisonous animal on planet Earth. Is that why we don't have them in the That's why we don't have them. I'm afraid they bite you guys. Some Nidaeans are fresh water. The Medusa stages right here. Um, there are two species I mentioned that they are um, they're fresh water. So you don't, the rest of the animals we study, they are marine. And when I say marine, you all know what I'm talking about. They live in that salt water in the ocean. Okay, they're marine animals. These are freshwater animals that they are in uh, in lakes, ponds, rivers. Something. Okay, main characteristics of Nidarian, uh, polyp and uh, and hyd polyp or hydroid. Another name for polyp is hydroid stage or sedentary. Uh, ab oral, oral, I wish I would have brought my models in here, uh, but medusa, bell shape or umbrella shape, a mouth in the center, mesoglia is thicker. Uh, nidocytes contain nematocysts, operculum, and three types of uh, nematocysts penetrant, uh, which penetrates their, uh, their host, the prey, um, not their host, the prey, and then, and of course, inject poison, evolvent, it means entangle the prey, and, and the third one is a glutenant for locomotion. They use it as adhesive substances for locomotion or attachment. 
and then they have nerve net, neuro, uh, neurotransmitter, you're familiar with that term. Their myelin do not, uh, their, their neurons, the nerve cells do not have myelin. And I talked about that at the beginning of semester. I said animals that are primitive, they do not have myelin. Animals that are more advanced, they do have myelin. Okay, and neuromuscular system, which I will talk about it on, uh, on, uh, on uh, Thursday. Uh, when we here is, if you would, uh, this is the polyp stage. This is the medusa stage. It means this moves, but this does not move. This sits on the bottom of lake or ocean. Do I make sense? So this is a hydroid or polyp stage. This is a medusa stage, which they move. Okay, so, and then of course, uh, there are some differences between them. Besides, they just, they do not move and uh, they are, uh, they do move. Uh, these are sedentary sessi. It's so the main difference, the big main difference between this one and that one is the gastrovascular cavity. The gastrovascular cavity is more elaborate, bigger than these guys. These guys, look at the, uh, the gastrodermis, sorry about that. The gastrodermis is more, uh, I made a mistake, it's a thinner on these guys, but on this guys, the gastrodermis is a little bit bigger, and then of course, gastrovascular cavity is right there. That's what the old name um, for this phylum was Solenterata because of this gastro huge gastrovascular cavity they have right here. Right here, they call them Solenterata. Okay, guys, have a nice weekend. Don't drink and drive. Please, I'll see you guys. Uh, if you're going to do this, be careful this weekend. Um, there's going to be a lot of people there. There's a conference in Davis this weekend. Can, you, can somebody tell William, can you turn it off before I say anything else? Yes.